Rafinha has scored. A cartwheel from Faustino Espria. And he salutes the crowd who in turn salute him. The goal coming in the 10th minute. And Colombia are in the lead by a goal to nil. What a tremendous goal by Espria. This is pure determination. Once the ball gets inside of the box, it looks like the defender is going to take the ball away from him. The giveaway by the Uruguayan defenders is taken away here. Nicely taken away by Aris Tezaba. He's the man who's going to square it across. Aspria controls it. The defender comes in, doesn't get all of it. Aspria hits first with the left, and then he puts it away with the right. He's just going to flick it over the player's head, something like Paul Gascoigne did for Scott against Scotland, and then he puts it away with that right foot. Tremendous goal by Aspria. Here's what the keeper saw. Look at this. He just pulls it back over the defender, and then he pushes it away. Doesn't get much better than that, Mike. Marvellous goal then from Faustino Aspria. As we get another look at it, and the goalkeeper there completely wrong-footed with that lovely skill and in the 10th minute Colombia take the lead as free of the goal scorer Colombia 1 Uruguay 0 I'm sure if Kevin Keegan is watching somewhere in the world he's wondering why this Aspria hasn't been able to do that at St James's Park for Newcastle United Uruguay now have a throw conceded an early goal that would not have been in their plans Oliver tries to uh, play that one across and again behind the byline will be a goal kick for Colombia Colombia who have never won the World Cup and Stino Aspria and over the disappointment of last season with Newcastle where they were pit for the English Premier League title all smiles as he salutes the crowd and that early goal has really woken up the crowd here Tommy Oh, well, it certainly hasn't. Uh, I mean, uh, Colombia just, just stuck in there. They've got the takeaway, and then that's free with a little bit of magic, and that's what it takes to get a crowd going. Now they have a 12th man in the game. they got the crowd in there, and it's going to be a particularly difficult task now for Uruguay to come back in a situation like this. I mean, it's only one goal, but you can just feel that the Colombians are starting to get on track again, Mike. That's free, yeah. team loses out Pretty of though chasing back giving the ball away this time though this is Cedrus turn of pace there from Gabriel Cedrus Cedrus did well to get a boot on it because it looked like he was going to be guilty of the giveaway and uh, he just knocked it into touch Cedrus so again too much on that no worries it's all for the goalkeeper Holding on. I was saying earlier that perhaps for the last World Cup, Colombia kicked a bit too early. They had that marvellous victory over Argentina, 5 0 in Buenos Aires in the qualifying, and then went for about a year without losing a game. And then just seemed to lose their form at the start of the World Cup, Tommy. Oh, yeah, they had a disastrous uh, World Cup. And you can see Valderrama here once again. He's been double teamed, Mike, and that's one of the reasons why everybody knew exactly how to take him out of the game. And I think that uh, Colombia, they've got to find another key man in the middle as well as Valderrama. They've got to take, you know, they've got to make a little uncertain what they're going to do with the ball. Of course, Valderrama retired from international play after the last World Cup. Didn't last too long. He decided to play in Copa America. Retired after that when uh, Colombia finished in third spot and came out of retirement again for World Cup qualifying well, maybe he likes to be unretired he's playing with the Tampa Bay Mutiny now in the United States and has played very well with him he has, he's really become a tremendous playmaker once again always looks like he's carrying about 10 or 15 or maybe 20 pounds overweight Mike but seems to get the job done and that's not counting his hair oh, he plays it wide Zabal in the front in it's easily cut out there G'day G'day you know, who's been recalled at the back 36 years old and 13 for Uruguay playing at 
to Penarol. That's nice. Takes the free kick quickly. Well, I think when the, the coach had a look at Gomez, had a look at what went on in the Olympic qualifiers and how badly Colombia fared, he decided perhaps it was time to go back to the veteran fight. Certainly Colombia, if they can put their best 11 players on the field, they probably equal to any team in the world. Unfortunately, they haven't got a really big pool of first-class players. Once you get out perhaps outside their first uh, 13 or 14, the quality drops alarmingly. It's a problem that Uruguay have been facing as well. They uh, to lose so many of their star players from their domestic competitions who play overseas. Of course, the Uruguayan domestic competition is in a lot of problems financially as long as they gone there. A real go at his defenders, and I can understand it, Tommy. There were three of them there, and they stood and watched. Look, look at this. The ball just dropped inside, and he makes a good save. He times it perfectly, just takes the ball away. Romero is the man going in, and if he gets a touch on it a little bit higher, he's going to put it into the back of the net. But look at that. The keeper stayed with it. He really used his concentration, but there's no excuse. That man should have been cut off. On the 25 year old goalkeeper who's you said earlier, just come into the international scene, plays for Independiente of Santa Fe. As Rincon gets away from his marker, nice to play that one in, but it took a ricochet from the defender. Getting back to what we were saying though, uh, football in Uruguay, a lot of the clubs are unable to play, pay their players, which of course leads to an exodus of uh, one of their better domestic players. It's been a long time since they've made a impression on the World Cup. They finished in fourth spot in 1970, but uh, from that point on, in the three times they've qualified, they've gone out either in the first or second round. The nation uh, has actually won it twice. It really is unacceptable. But on the other side of the coin, Mike, when you look at Colombia, I mean, for the past two years, they've managed to get teams into the final of Copa Libertadores, which is the South American Club Championship, but Lerico Nacional were beating by Gremio in 1995, and of course uh, America losing to River Plate this year. You'd imagine they would have been fit to expand their panel a little bit more, wouldn't you? You think so? Here's Rincon. Back here looking for Espria. Good defensive work. Now, Moreno being forced wide. And that came off of Moreno. It'll be a throw to Uruguay, but a delightful back hill then, and that completely deceived the Uruguayan defenders, Tommy. Yes, and uh, Spria almost got on to the end of it. And when you look at that bench for Colombia, when you talk about goal scorers, I mean, Anthony Diavila is the, the lead goal scorer in Copa Libertadores, and he can't find a spot on this team. You have to feel that somewhere today he's going to get into this game, Mike. Yes, uh, Anthony Diavila there, the 32-year-old, uh, another veteran, really, though, Tommy. That's... Uh, Perhaps their problem, as we've got a free kick. The referee from Argentina, Roberto Ruccio, in very quickly, and Freddie Rincon, the player who's penalised. Well, Avera is the man, and uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which way that free should have went. The referee said, "I'll put it this way, so you don't have to worry about it." He made the decision for me. Cena plays it forward, Rincon. Valderrama, last look again, and Valderrama trying to slide that one through. Well, you just have the feeling that everything's going right for Colombia today. Every little flick is almost making it, and just the last ball let them down a couple of times in the box, but they look really dangerous. And Cerna, Rincon. Well, Freddie Rincon still on the books at uh, Real Madrid. Speculation, of course, he could be on the way out of that uh, great Spanish club but of course now they've got a new coach in Fabio Capello and as well as a few new players including uh, Roberto Carlos who they signed from Inter Milan and uh, Clarence Seedorf the match international they've signed from Sampdoria oh that was a nasty tackle Mendoza came in very hard there Mike and stamped down on it 
It was also tough that Rincon was supposed to go also go into the MLS. He was supposed to go to the Metro Stars. Here's an opportunity now. The shot charge down for and Uruguay with that half chance. And you just get the feeling there, Tommy, that their, their confidence is just so low. Nobody really attacked that ball for Uruguay. No, that's two good opportunities they've had in the box now, and neither time translating into a goal. Magic from Australia there as you went past a couple of players and tried to play it forward. Now the shot, and it's seeming to be deflected away. Oh, Easter Rappazabal is the man who ends up at the end of it, but Espria makes a beautiful run, and as the ball is cut into the middle, it's going to come off the defender, and here it comes to Arista Zaba. That should have been a corner. Referee, in fact, has found a, a print of some kind. Zaba pulled into the starting lineup. After coming on as a substitute and scoring in that last outing for Colombia, the 1 1 draw away to Peru. Going back to Freddie Rincon, I mean, and it, it really is, he really is now at the crossroads of his career, isn't he? He's got a great chance with Capello taking over to impress the new coach, and if Capello gets the tape of this game, I'm sure he's going to be very impressed. Oh, yeah, the Rincon has started off very, very, you know, some delightful football here so far. Here come Uruguay. That one's lifted over, and uh, a glance there from Sara Leggi. As he looked across and saw the flag was up from the linesman. Oh, and a good call too by the linesman. Let's see where he is from the there he is. He's about two yards offside. Sarah Leggy had snuck in behind everybody, but the reason why he was able to do it was because he was offside. But Freddie Rincon is so big and strong by can I mean we remember him with the Pan Miras in the Molista League. I mean he's just so talented as well as having you know he has all the tools. good close control yeah it's very difficult to push him off the ball because I mean not alone has he the skill to withstand you but he also has that height and the strength as well one player not uh, included in this Colombian squad for today's game is uh, Valenciano and that's a bit of a surprise for me yeah it certainly is I am not sure what the coach is thinking on that is but uh, you have to feel that you know with the way that the Rincon is in there and Valderrama that Valenciano would be a good uh, he'd be a good third cog on the wheel I certainly would appreciate the service from those two as well as the service from uh, Aspria and Moreno there trying the back heel he's an interesting character Antonio Moreno plays for Tolima 25 years old as we said earlier one of the new phases that's come in but uh, he looks very very strong very dangerous on this uh, left hand touchline Tommy well really if they're going to survive Mike I mean if you look ahead to 1998 I mean you put two more years onto many of these players this is definitely the last for and they're going to depend on players like Moreno yeah, they've all played wide or if the Zabo has been penalised can't believe the decision In that time. Let's have a look at it. Well, the ball is pushed across into the box, and Lima and Arista Zabel going together, and he just got the feet tied up by no intent in it, but the referee has given the free out. Look at he just clips him on the heel, and uh, the player goes down, and once he goes down, the referee blows the whistle right away. I think the replay clearly showed both players just having their eye on the ball. Again, looking for Carlos Valderrama. It's easily cut out. Here come Uruguay. Full country Uruguay. Twice winners of the World Cup. 14 times. They've won the Copa America, the South American Championship. Here's Astria. Combining now with Valderrama, who plays this one through. This is Serna. Playing it to the far post. Just too high for Astria. Make the turn, keeps the ball in play, plays this one across Valderrama! It's 2-0! Carlos Valderrama 
with a hitting goal that was set up for him by Faustino Espria. Good move from Colombia, excellent finishing, and they increase the scoreline. Well, it looked like the player was dead up while Espria runs on to the end of it and retrieves the ball right on front of Lima. Two players coming in on top of it. Cabrera is there also, but look at the square across. Valderrama runs onto it perfectly, heads it down, and there's the bull to the Olungian bag as he puts it by the keeper. Powerful header, the ball squared across onto the far side. Looked like the opportunity was dead, but here comes Aspria. He has other ideas, brings it outside of the box, chips it back across. Valderrama's run down the middle, he heads it down. Very awkward hopper in towards the keeper, takes that big bounce. The keeper's nowhere near it beautiful goal by Valderrama but it was pure determination by Aspria most players would have given up at that stage Mike but he wanted the ball knew exactly what he was going to do with it beautiful floated across for Carlos Valderrama and he did everything right the goal coming in the 24th minute it is now Colombia 2 Uruguay 0 Aspria scored the first and then a big hand in the second. Well, he's been all over the field. I mean, he started off that play. He even surprised Valderrama, I think, with the first initial pass on that play where it started, Mike. Valderrama being the great player that he was fit to recover and get on to the end of it. And then Aspria just stayed with it. Some people will tell you, in fact, that uh, half a season playing at Newcastle has improved uh, Aspria's game uh, quite considerably. Now he's a lot harder worker. Actually, his time when he played in uh, Serie A with Palma in Italy. As we've got a free kick for Uruguay. He often uses sort of just stay on that uh, left-hand touch line, waiting for the ball to come through to him. But now he goes foraging, and that was a good example of it, where he just did not give up, just chased it, and eventually got it across. Well, if you're going to survive in the Premiership, you've got to be able to do those things, as we see a little headbutting going on here with Valderrama and Freddie Rincon. Free kick for Uruguay. Played wide, looking for the knock-across goal. And then Dario Gomez, the coach of Colombia, who took over after the World Cup Finals in the United States the assistant uh, at US uh, 94 Valderrama in the poor pass a player who has played uh, not only here in South America also had a spell in Spain and also played in France Mendoza comes across here's Valderrama again switching play, there's just so much space on that far side, here's Alvarez over again Double. Alvarez sometimes uh, Colombia a little bit over elaborate Tommy well, Alvarez there pulling it back and it looked like he was going to play himself into trouble that five or six touches on it but once again you always get the impression that they're looking for Valderrama on the midfield Martinez, a coach under a lot of pressure for Uruguay strip not really going the way that he expected one of the biggest results so far in the World Cup qualifying in, uh, here in South America where it's a new format this year all nine countries will play each other at home and away 16 games, that really is unusual and it's spread over a couple of years Uruguay losing at home to Paraguay is a major sh surprise and of course the fact that Ecuador are off to such a great start too that, that has proven to be a surprise as well Mike is early on in this South American uh, World Cup qualifying I'm sure that uh, this tournament progresses we're going to see a lot more as well it really has made the playing field a bit uh, more level now because this is what uh, European teams have to do anyway they have to play their World Cup qualifiers over a couple of years here's Rincon oh, Freddie was just a little bit slow there at finding control of the ball allowing 
Oliveira the opportunity to get back and shut him down. From Uruguay. But I always felt that it was a little bit unfair the way the South American World Cup qualifiers were before. They got together for a couple of weeks to have their teams in good shape. They knew exactly when it was going to be. And uh, I mean, I know the best teams still won, but it, it, it gave the bigger teams a greater opportunity because you didn't have to worry about suspensions, injuries and everything if you could get it just to gel for that couple of weeks period. Yeah, now got to do it um, nearly over 24 months, so players can lose form, players can get injured. Certainly it's been one of the problems that European nations have had to face over the years. Yeah, there was the player who was uh, penalised. Be a free kick to Uruguay. Oh, and you can see the player just developing there. Cedrus is the man who's with the ball, and Alvarez, who is, as we said, takes so many of those bad frees in the MLS, takes another one there. yet to play for Real Zaragoza in Spain. Oh, he has the opportunity in the block down nicely there. Bermudez is the man who got a, a boot to it. One of the few touches he's had and I mean he was such a central figure this year for American Copa Libertadores. I mean he really impressed us Mike. He certainly did as this one is lifted over. We said earlier that uh, Colombia have had trouble replacing uh, Rene Higuita in goal, they certainly sound seem as if they found a good one here, Tommy. Yeah, Montagan looks like he's going to be the keeper of the future, that's for sure. And if you're just joining us here on ESPN, this is the World Cup qualifier coming to you from Barranquilla in Colombia. It's a sensational start in the first half. Asprilla opening the scoring for Colombia in the 10th minute. Valderrama increased the scoreline in the 24th minute. And it is now Colombia to Uruguay nil, along with Tommy Smith, I'm Michael. It's been a very entertaining first 31 minutes or so, Tommy. Well, it certainly has, and the uh, Colombians are certainly providing the home crowd with great entertaining, very, very classy, one-touch football, Mike. And they've really looked like the Colombian team that a lot of people knew existed but hadn't really seen for a long time. side they're taken by Rivera and there's Hector Nunes talking there to Pablo Bingo Chair who has been uh, given instructions to start warming up it was a surprise when he was admitted from the starting lineup Tommy a player with a lot of experience oh yeah and a good skillful player a player who can score goals as well as everything else Mike I'm very surprised that he's still on the bench but well maybe Nunes knows something that we don't there playing that one through looking for the give and go along with Espria now Valderrama playing it through and Mr. Zabel was caught offside as the ball pushed through well let's see Valderrama is the man setting up that's a good call just Mr. Zabel, yeah just a little mistiming Mike he just took off too quickly split down the middle and uh, I think they penalised him for handling the ball no contact you can see he just times it perfectly but there it is he blocks the ball down with his hand look he doesn't get a card so he didn't seem to be uh, deliberate Austria, not the best of clearances and now it's what Starble there just seemed to go the wrong way so he went right he might have done better turning left yeah that there were appeals for a penalty as well now a chance at the other end Romero, and the defender there just sticking to his task. Bermudez 
It's so hard to get past. Certainly at the juncture of the game that if Uruguay are going to score, Mike, they need a goal badly at this stage. There's a great opportunity and in the end it goes into the side netting. Quiet. The player for Real Zaragoza in Spain. That was a great opportunity, Tommy. Oh, he should have put it away. He should have put it away at the first asking. Beautifully ball squared across to him from the byline. Look at this. He's all alone. He has plenty of time. Gets the header on it. Keeper does well to knock it out. Now he has a second opportunity. And what does he do? He puts it into the side netting. Saralagi is the man who gets it across to him. Plenty of open goal. Instead, he heads it right down to the keeper. And then he tries to square it over him. He puts it by the post.